Have you ever wondered why some objects are transparent while others are not? Or why some materials glow while others remain dark? This mystery of light interacting with matter has fascinated scientists for centuries. From the glowing embers of a campfire to the transparency of a glass window, the play of light with different types of matter is a spectacle that never ceases to amaze. How does light, an entity that we cannot touch or feel, have the power to transform the appearance of the world around us? How does it make some objects glow, some transparent, and leave others in the dark? These questions have led to a deeper understanding of the universe and our place in it. It's an exploration that has revealed new perspectives on the nature of reality itself. Today we unravel the science behind these intriguing phenomena. First, we need to understand what light is. Light, simply put, is a form of energy, but it's not as straightforward as that. It's a fascinating blend of both waves and particles, a concept known as wave-particle duality. This concept is a cornerstone of quantum mechanics, and it's what makes light so unique. Imagine light as ripples on the surface of a pond, spreading out in all directions. This is light behaving as a wave. It's characterized by its wavelength, frequency, and speed. The wavelength and frequency determine the color of the light, while the speed remains constant at approximately 300,000 kilometers per second in a vacuum. Now, picture light as tiny particles or photons shooting out like bullets from a gun. This is light behaving as a particle. Photons are packets of energy, each carrying a specific amount of energy determined by the frequency of the light. But light isn't just the colors we see with our eyes. That's only a tiny part of the whole spectrum, aptly named visible light. The spectrum extends far beyond what our eyes can perceive, from long wavelength radio waves to short wavelength gamma rays. In between, we have microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, each with their own unique properties and uses. Visible light is sandwiched right in the middle, with its rainbow of colors ranging from red, with the longest wavelength, to violet, with the shortest. Each color is linked to a specific amount of energy, with red being the least energetic and violet the most. It's this spectrum of light that interacts with matter in different ways, leading to fascinating phenomena like reflection, refraction, and absorption. Whether it's the opaque wall that blocks light, the transparent glass that lets it through, or the semi-transparent fog that scatters it, each interaction tells a tale about the nature of light and matter. Now that we understand what light is, let's delve into how it interacts with matter. Imagine shining a torch at a brick wall. What happens? The light doesn't pass through, right? This is because the brick wall is an example of an opaque material. Opaque materials have a unique relationship with light, one that involves the concepts of reflection, absorption, and color. When light hits an opaque object, like our brick wall, most of it is reflected off the surface. This reflection is what makes the object visible to our eyes. The light bounces off the object and into our eyes, allowing us to perceive the object. But not all light is reflected. Some of it is absorbed by the object. Absorption happens when the atoms of the material take in the light's energy. This energy causes the atoms to vibrate, and this vibration turns into heat. That's why things warm up when they're in bright sunlight. Now you might be wondering, why do different objects have different colors? Well, the color of an object is all to do with the light that it doesn't absorb. When light hits an object, it absorbs certain wavelengths or colors of light and reflects others. The colors we see are the ones that are reflected. For instance, a ripe tomato appears red because it absorbs all colors of light except for red, which it reflects. The reflected red light reaches our eyes, and voila, we see a red tomato. In the case of our brick wall, it might absorb all colors except brown or gray, and that's the color we perceive. So when you shine your torch at that brick wall, the light is either reflected or absorbed. The reflected light is what allows you to see the wall, and the absorbed light is what gives the wall its color. So that's why we can't see through brick walls or why objects have different colors. But what about materials we can see through? Let's delve into that next, as we explore the fascinating world of transparent and semi-transparent matter. Glass, water, air, we can see through them, but how? Let's dive into the fascinating world of physics to answer this question. When light encounters transparent matter like glass or water, something remarkable happens. Unlike opaque materials which absorb or reflect light, transparent substances allow light to pass through them. This is known as transmission. 
But the story doesn't end with simple transmission. Light doesn't just pass through these materials as if they weren't there. It interacts with them, and this interaction leads to a phenomenon called refraction. Refraction is the bending of light as it passes from one medium to another. It happens because light travels at different speeds in different materials. In air, light zips along at a breakneck pace, but when it hits water or glass, it slows down, and when it slows down, it changes direction. Think of it like this. Imagine you're running on a sandy beach, and then you plunge into the sea. You can't run as fast in the water as you could on the sand, right? And if you enter the water at an angle, your path bends because of the change in speed. That's exactly what happens to light when it moves from air into water or glass. This bending of light, this refraction, is why a straw looks bent in a glass of water. It's why fish in a pond seem closer to the surface than they really are. Refraction is everywhere in our world, from the lenses in our eyes to the magnifying glass that helps us see tiny details, and even to the rainbows that paint the sky after a storm. So, the bending of light as it moves from air to water or glass is what we call refraction. But what about materials that are somewhere in between, neither fully opaque nor fully transparent? Ever looked through frosted glass or a thin piece of cloth and wondered why you can see but not clearly? That's the mystery of semi-transparent materials and it's all about how they interact with light. Semi-transparent materials like a foggy window or a sheer curtain allow some light to pass through, but not all. This is what's known as partial transmission. These materials are like a gatekeeper, deciding how much light gets to pass and how much gets bounced back or absorbed. Now you might be wondering, why is the image blurry? Why can't we see clearly through these materials? Well, here's where things get interesting. When light hits a semi-transparent object, it doesn't just pass straight through. Instead, it gets scattered in all different directions. Imagine a crowd of people trying to get through a narrow door all at once. They'll be bumping into each other, scattering in different directions, and it'll be chaos. That's what happens when light hits a semi-transparent material. The light rays scatter and spread out, causing the image to become blurry or distorted. Now, the degree of this scattering depends on the specific properties of the material. Some materials, like a thin piece of cloth, might scatter light more than others, like a piece of frosted glass. This scattering is what gives semi-transparent materials their unique properties and effects. It's also worth noting that not all light interacting with semi-transparent matter results in scattering. Some light might be absorbed by the material, turning into heat energy. This is why a thin curtain might feel warm if it's been in the sun all day. So next time, you're peering through a foggy window or a sheer curtain, remember this. It's not just about the light that's getting through. It's also about the light that's being scattered, making things appear blurry. So, semi-transparent materials scatter light, making things appear blurry. Now let's bring it all together. So, we've seen how light interacts with different types of materials. But what's the big picture? Well, each interaction we've explored paints a vivid portrait of the world around us. Opaque materials, like a sturdy brick wall, absorb or reflect light, giving us the rich tapestry of colours we see every day. Transparent materials, like a clear glass window, allow light to pass through them without distortion, providing us with an unaltered view of the world beyond. Semi-transparent materials, like frosted glass or a thin veil, allow some light to pass while scattering the rest, creating effects of softness and diffusion. Dark matter, elusive and mysterious, does not interact with light in the way we're familiar with, posing intriguing questions for scientists to solve. These interactions, complex and diverse, form the cornerstone of our understanding of the universe. And there you have it. The fascinating science of light and matter interaction, illuminating the world as we see it.